there's one problem that open world games usually struggle to overcome, it's the tension between the stories that the writers are trying to tell and the story you create yourself within its systems and its world. What makes Grand Theft Auto V such an outstanding achievement is that it accommodates both masterfully, allowing neither to undermine the other. It gives you tremendous freedom to explore an extraordinarily well-realized world and tells a story that's gripping, thrilling and darkly comic. In nearly every way, it is a leap forward in sophistication for the series. He sits on his ass all day, smoking dope and jerking off while he plays that f***ing game. GTA V is also an intelligent and sharp-tongued contemporary satire, taking aim at post-economic crisis America and relentlessly ripping into its materialism, superficiality, corruption and hypocrisy. They're shooting porno here. They shoot porno all over town. Mom rented our house to them last summer. Was what? Your house? Yeah. Man, you got a killer pad, Mr. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? If GTA IV is a targeted assassination of the American dream, GTA V takes aim at the modern American reality. It rips into the millennial generation, celebrities, the far right, the far left, the middle class, the media. Nothing is safe, including modern video games. Go away. What the The attention to detail that goes into making its enormous world feel alive and believable is also what makes its satire so biting. That must feel good. What a proud patriot you are. At the same time, it's immediately noticeable that every aspect of Grand Theft Auto V's fundamental design has been greatly improved over GTA 4. The cover system is more reliable, the auto-aim less touchy. Cars handle less like their tires are made of butter, though their exaggerated handling still leaves plenty of room for spectacular wipeouts. Grand Theft Auto V's plot happily operates at the boundaries of plausibility, but its three main characters are what keep it relatable. I was just lost in an 80s movie fantasy. <laughs> Yeah, I can see you spend a lot of time here. The well-written and acted interplay between them provides the story's biggest laughs and its most affecting moments. And the way that their relationships with one another develop gives the narrative its power. Michael is a retired con man in his 40s who settled down in a Vinewood Hills mansion with a family that pretty much hates him. Mom was right about you. You don't know any better and you can't help it, but you're an asshole. Franklin is a young man from downtown Los Santos who laments the gangbanger stereotype even as he's reluctantly seduced by the prospect of a bigger score. So you giving me a lecture about not being a good enough gangbanger? Who is that? And then... Hello, Missy! Well, then there's Trevor. I want you to leave now! Look, this is all I've got, all right? I had a tough upbringing. My daddy was not... Nice to me! Oh, hey there, Trevor. Trevor feels like a bit of a get out of jail free card for Rockstar, providing an outlet for all the preposterous antics and murderous behavior. I found his violent insanity a little overblown and tiresome at first, but then his over the top missions become some of Grand Theft Auto V's highlights. Importantly, switching between the characters is a brilliant way of accommodating both serious storytelling and wanton mayhem. That alleviates some of the narrative inconsistency that troubled Grand Theft Auto IV. It's effective. Even off mission, I find myself acting like a midlife crisis guy with anger issues as Michael, a thrill seeker as Franklin, and a maniac as Trevor. Each also has a special ability, like Franklin's slow motion driving, which gives them a unique touch. If Grand Theft Auto IV's Liberty City felt like a living city, San Andreas feels like a living world, and it contains a bewildering multiplicity of things to do. The missions are an able guide to both San Andreas's locations and its activities, touring you around the map and whetting your appetite for independent exploration. It pushes the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 further than it has any right to, and it looks incredible. The biggest jump in quality since Grand Theft Auto 4 is the character animation, but the world is also much more detailed and populous. San Andreas's extraordinary sense of place is heightened by the fact that so much of it isn't on the map. There's such a lot going on that it's easy to find things organically, without the need to spend your life following a mission marker. I once stole a passenger jet from the airport for the hell of it, then parachuted onto the top of the tallest building in Los Santos. I bought an expensive mountain bike and cycled around in the hills enjoying the view. The music selection is also typically excellent, leading to many of those serendipitous moments where you're driving along and the perfect song comes on the radio. These little moments can be captured on your phone camera, which, brilliantly, can also take selfies. The price we pay for all of this is occasional frame rate dips and texture popping, which I found became more prominent the longer I played, but never significantly detracted from my experience. For such a gigantic and flexible world, it's also remarkably bug-free. 
I encountered just three minor ones in the 35 hours I spent on my first playthrough. The story that Grand Theft Auto V tells through its missions takes full advantage of all this variety beyond the simple joys of driving and shooting. The days of drive here, find this guy, shoot this guy are behind us. You never know what you're going to end up doing. Even missions that would otherwise be formulaic are imbued with novelty and excitement by the potential to play them from three different viewpoints. In this shootout, Trevor's firing RPGs from a rooftop as Michael and Franklin flank the enemy on the ground. And at long last, Rockstar has finally slain one of GTA's most persistent demons, mission checkpointing, ensuring that you'll never have to do a long, tedious drive six times if you repeatedly fail a mission ever again. It's the heists, multi-stage, huge-scale events that serve as the story's climactic peaks that show Grand Theft Auto V at its most ambitious and accomplished. Usually each offers a choice between a more involved, stealthier approach and a guns blazing option that will be less tense but more explosively chaotic. All of GTA V's missions are replayable at any time, letting you relive favourite moments or try out another approach. Sometimes your own approach won't be the way that Rockstar's designers expected, and though Grand Theft Auto V is usually very good at bending around you when that happens, there were one or two occasions where it wasn't prepared for my personal brand of chaos. Most of the time the scripting is good enough to be invisible, but when it's not you really notice it, if only because it's otherwise so seamless. It's worth mentioning that when it comes to sex, drugs, and violence, GTA V pushes boundaries much further than ever before. You shitting me? No. If the morality police were worried about hot coffee, there's a lot here that will provoke moral hysteria. Hey Trevor, are we still gonna cook that batch? Fuck yeah! It's deliciously subversive and firmly tongue-in-cheek, but once or twice it pushes the boundaries of taste too. There's one particular scene, a torture scene in which you have no choice but to participate, that I found so troubling I had difficulty playing it. Even couched in obvious criticism of the US government's recourse to torture post 9-11, it's a shocking moment that will attract justified controversy. Some other stuff, like the ever-present prostitution and extensive strip club minigames, feel like it's just there because it can be, rather than because it has anything to say. Yeah. But there's nothing in San Andreas that doesn't serve Rockstar's purpose in creating an exaggerated projection of America that's suffused with crime, violence and sleaze. Grand Theft Auto V is not only a preposterously enjoyable video game, but also an intelligent, wickedly comic and bitingly relevant commentary on contemporary America. It represents a refinement of everything that GTA 4 brought to the table five years ago. It's technically more accomplished in every conceivable way, but it's also tremendously ambitious in its own right. No other world in video games comes close to this in size or scope, and there is sharp intelligence behind its sense of humour and gift for mayhem. It tells a compelling, unpredictable and provocative story without ever letting it get in the way of your own self-directed adventures through San Andreas. It is one of the very best video games ever made. For more on Grand Theft Auto V, including the upcoming Grand Theft Auto Online multiplayer mode, stick with us on IGN.